A family disappears and attention shifts to one man. I want her back so bad. I want those kids back so bad. In the early morning hours of August 13th, 2018, a 34 year old woman named Shanann Watts returns back to her Colorado home after a business trip. Later that day, Shanann and her two girls, four year old Bella and three year old Celeste, would be reported missing. Shanann was married to 33 year old Chris Watts. At the time of her disappearance, the family of four was about to get a bit bigger. I just said the pink is gonna be girls. I don't know, just the chest. That's awesome. Chris and Shanann had what would be considered a picture perfect marriage. They had a beautiful home. They both had striving careers. They had children, a baby that was on the way. We would learn though that Shanann and Chris's marriage was on the rocks. We do know that there was some strain in their marriage there were some issues with his parents and how they felt about Shanann. And Shanann had expressed in some text messages to a friend that she felt that his parents were getting in the way. Chris tells police that when he returned from work, Shanann and the girls were gone. It's at this point when Chris's behavior comes into question. I have no idea like where they went. And it doesn't, it's just earth shattering. I don't feel like this is even real right now. It's like a nightmare that I just can't wake up from. He vacillates from being really calm verbally to being really fidgety and kind of rocking back and forth. Bella was going to start kindergarten. He talks in the past tense about one of his daughters. The way that he talks about his children is as if he's grieving them. It's like, I want her back so bad. I want those kids back so bad. There were no tears. There was no emotion. He came out very cool. Things get really strange, though, when police arrive. Watts's neighbor shows the officer and Chris himself what his security camera picked up in the early morning hours of the disappearance. The footage never shows Shanann leaving with the girls. Instead, it reveals Chris backing up his truck into the garage and loading it before eventually driving away. Immediately, he started offering reasons as to what he was putting in the vehicle, and he was kind of hyper about that. When Chris leaves, listen to what that neighbor had to say. No. He doesn't look worried. He looks like he's trying to cover his track. Chris yeah, was holding a secret from everyone, something that would add a new layer to this mystery. We're not, we're not here to play games. We're not here to do any of that with you. We just want to know what happened. He does agree to a polygraph test. Did you physically cause Shanann's disappearance? No. Are you lying about the last time you saw Shanann? No. The results of that polygraph were not what Watts wanted to hear. So um, it is completely clear that you were not honest during the testing, and I think you already know that. Um, you did not pass the polygraph test. Right? Okay. Okay. So now we need to talk about what actually happened. Uh, I didn't. I didn't lie to you on that polygraph. I promise. Chris, I'm 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 stop. It's time. Chris was covering up something, something that he eventually reveals. But you weren't here today lying about something else. So we need to talk about that, okay? About your daughter. Thank you so much for coming out here with me, Christopher. I am having a wonderful time. You mean a lot to me. The month prior to Shanann and the girls vanishing. Chris began a secret affair with Nicole Kessinger, a woman he met through work. The affair between Chris Watts and Nikki Kessinger was very quick. He ended up being kind of like a lovesick puppy. They had a highly sexual relationship, and it was all consuming for Chris. She accused me of it. I denied it. I cheated on her, and I feel horrible for it. Like, she was pregnant, and she got fell in love with her. Absolutely. Okay. I mean, that's God's honest truth. You're this great guy. I'm not just telling you that, okay? We're confused as to why you're not taking care of your beautiful children. I don't know where they're at. These are your baby girls. No. And you have not shed one tear over them not being around. I love those girls. I, I would never do any of this because I haven't shed a tear. 
Yeah, no, that's weird. Uh, Is that uh, weird? Uh, okay. Chris, did Shanann do something to them? No, I don't know. I'm serious. I, I have no clue. And it's that line of questioning that leads into the next stage of this interview. Chris's father, Ronnie, is brought in to speak with his son. Anything else you want to tell me what's, what's going on? Or? We had that conversation that morning. It was, you know, it was emotional. It was told her about separation and everything like that. Mm -hmm. I don't want to protect her. You don't want to protect her? Chris shocks his father by claiming that after getting into an emotional fight with Shanann, she murdered their children. He then says he killed her in a fit of rage. I don't know like, what else to say. Like, Chris explains that after killing Shanann, he then decided to transport the bodies to a site near his workplace, where he proceeded to bury Shanann in a grave and disposed of his daughters in oil tanks. I didn't know what else to do. I know. I didn't know what else to do. I was so scared. I know. This story is not believable at all. It's really convenient for him. Most people would call the police, not kill their spouse and hide all of the bodies and try to pretend this never happened. It's, it's some, some of it's hard to believe that your wife did it, I don't know, right? You can imagine that, I don't know, okay. The bodies of Shanann, Bella, and Celeste would be found by law enforcement at the work site. Chris Watts stuffed his girls in these oil drums that were, you know, eight inches across how could somebody do something so horrific to their own family? Ultimately, authorities didn't believe Chris's version of events, and he would be charged with murdering all three members of his family. Instead of fighting the case, Chris pleaded guilty to all charges. As part of that plea deal, the government agreed to take the death penalty off the table. Chris Watts was sentenced to five life terms in prison without the possibility of parole.